Hello, this is Palico Pad, and welcome back to more of the Curious Expedition. Now, we have a problem. We have a problem. I have just started up this game, ready to bring you Expedition 4 of 6 with Harriet Tubman. Back once again with the Slave Liberator, the ill behavior, the ill behavior. That's a fat boy slim reference if you weren't too sure there. And for some reason, I can't. I, I, I don't know if there's been an update or what, but the grey box is, is well, greyed out. <laughs> so I can't, I can't click continue. I don't know what's going on. It's ridiculous. But I did, I did have a little bit of a panic attack because I thought, oh God, the whole game has just reinstalled itself and I've lost everything. Everything is gone. But thankfully... Everyone's still here. So I, I, I don't know what's happened to the save file. I honestly don't. Now, I, I did have to do a, uh, uh, what's it called? A recovery on my computer a few days ago because what went wrong? Oh, my, well, that's it. My mic stopped working and I had to reinstall the software after trying to do an update. No, it wasn't my mic. It was my wireless headphones. That's what it was. My wireless headphones. My G930 headphones. And they stopped working. So I had to reinstall the software and then the new software wouldn't recognize the old headphones, which really annoyed me. So I had to dial everything back to my last installation and that's the only thing I can put down to why this save game disappeared everything else seems fine my as you can see my golden portraits are still here and everyone's still open so I don't know where my save game's gone so that's a bit rubbish I haven't actually recorded since then like before then so I don't even if I rolled it back in for whatever reason it got rid of you know my, my save or, or what I would have recorded before then it, it, it hasn't so I I have no idea. I have no idea. So, let's just say, good old Tubby here, she she decided to retire after three expeditions. Hard mode was too much for a certain death. Too close to the edge. She just couldn't cope. So, she's retired. She's, she's living it up with very little money. But she, nonetheless, she is living it. She's living. But no more to say than that, really. She is living. It's more than we could say about some of the explorers we've played with. But it does mean that her time has come to an end. Prematurely, yes, but even so. I don't really want to be play replaying the first three expeditions to try and get close to what was going on to continue on the fourth. And I don't really want to have to have you guys watch it. But it's, it's someone we will definitely come back to it as because as far as I'm concerned, she is not finished with. We are not done with her. She will be returning at some point. We don't have that many explorers left, so she's going to have to re re return at some point, or else we're not going to have anything to play. Hmm, there you go. Anyway, it does mean we get to crack on with a new explorer today, and we are starting with Mr. Crowley. Bow, bow, bow. That's a Nazi Osborne song. Or was it a Black Sabbath song? I think it was Nazi Osborne song, not Black Sabbath. Check out Ozzy Osborne solo stuff in the late 80s. It's some really good songs. Shot in the Dark. Best Ozzy Osborne song ever. Look it up, look it up. But, I digress. Alistair Crowley, notorious occultist, self-proclaimed prophet with a thing for funky hats. Yes, yes. And his special ability is he has the occult vision, which reveals the locations of all stone circles and increases the radius when analysing them. Hmm, interesting. Stone circles are around quite a bit. Should be useful, should be useful. But, what do we know about Alistair Crowley? Well, he was born on the 12th of October, 1875, in, and this is what the wiki says, Royal Leamington Spa. Royal Leamington Spa. Now, I've been to Royal, with inverted commas, Leamington Spa. I think we'll just call it Leamington Spa. There's nothing too royal about it, but from what I gather, any name with spa in it, where the old uh, Roman baths used to be, uh, gets royal as a, a sort of like a a front note to their name so we have royal bath uh, which obviously it's not got spa in it but royal bath and obviously baths are a small spa or you know something you soak in like a spa so royal bath and royal yeah royal Leamington spa we'll miss that bit but yeah royal Leamington spa in 1875 and he's known as it says here as, as being an occultist a ceremonial magician poet painter novelist and then tagged right on at the end here mountaineer yes there we go because they all fall in the same category he likes to paint rhyme and write whilst climbing hills which is great you'd have thought that the hill climbing uh what's it called perk that's what i'm looking for the hill climbing perk would be 
very apt for him, as well as the Occult Vision. Especially seeing as he's, he is classed as a bonus character. Maybe he could have got away with having two perks instead of one, but anyway. Never mind, never mind. So yeah, Mountaineer, believe it or not. I'm guessing that's why he's got a hill on his hat in the picture. It's, it's probably a pyramid in all fairness, but no, it looks it's hilly, so that'll do. He's from a wealthy Plymouth Brethren family. Now, I had to look up what the Plymouth Brethren family is, and it was a, a, a highly strict religious, I'm not going to say cult, but a, a very strict Christian uh, faith, M much like, um, well, any of the other strict Christian faiths out there, there's loads. They, they followed the Bible to a T. And uh, because of this, it makes you wonder that he turned out to be, as he did, as a rejection to how he was brought up. Because, again, it's all Freudian, I'm not going into it too much, but it's interesting that he goes to the polar opposite of how he was brought up. It is it is a rejection to his uh, to, to his, his childhood, in a way, and therefore it makes you wonder if he was, you know, maybe brought up a little bit too strictly. And if he was given a little bit, you know, more of a, a loose lead, then maybe he would have grown up a bit more normal. But there you go. He likes his hats. And uh, he went to Cambridge University, which at the time was still a very highbrow thing. It's not something which every person could go to. It, you, you needed money to go to Cambridge, and, and that's where he got, uh, he got uh, trained. And in 1898, whilst at Cambridge, he joined the, Ace, sorry, again, the Esoteric Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Now, who were they? Basically, the, Go the Golden Dawn were an organisation which devoted themselves to the study of metaphysics, the occult and paranormal activities. So that's where the whole magic, and that is magic with CK at the end rather than just a C, and sometimes, depending on who you're speaking to, sometimes there's a J there instead of the G, but majority of times it's magic as in M-A-G-I-C-K. That is the actual proper spooky magic as opposed to the pulling a bunny out of a, out of a hat sort of thing. So. Yes, he joined the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and that's really where it started. Now, again, another big word there, esoteric. Had to look that up. Esotericism, is how I believe you pronounce it, is the study of rejected knowledge, which can be counteracted with being called higher knowledge, and having an, an enchanted worldview. So it's basically having a, a an open mind about most things. and. Again, the problem with a lot of these Christian... I keep going on to religion in these introduced videos. It's not good because it just causes problems. But basically, it's a case of... I think because he was brought up so constricted, he, he, it was a rejection. And because it's a much more open ideal of, of the world, that it's what you know in, in, enchanted him, I suppose you could say, towards, towards it, really. So, yes... So it was an esoteric hermetic order of the Golden Dawn is what he what he decided to do, and uh, he he followed that throughout his life, and that was pretty much the the, the start of everything for him. He, as I said, he was he was a, a big poet, a big painter, and a big novelist. And uh, after he finished at Cambridge, he moved up to Loch Ness in Scotland. Loch Ness monster, yes, spooky again, spooky. He then moved to Mexico to do a bit of mountaineering, as you do. Didn't really know Mexico were renowned for their mountains when you've got America so close. And, but I suppose he had the Andes and all that. And then uh, he went to India to study Hindu and Buddhism. Now, when I said that he was an occultist, a lot of people think that this means that he rejects all known styles of religion. It's not. It, what it is, it's, it's the, as I said, it's open-mindedness. It, he, he studied a whole plethora of religions. And because of that, it, it, you know, I, I think he is, because of the way he's brought up as a child and to what he became as a man, he, he was known as a Satanist, and that's because he wasn't Christian. And again, I, th I think that's, uh, and with the whole magic thing as well, you know, it, I suppose it can be classed as Satanism in a way, as much as Wicca magic can and, and the Wicca religion. Uh, but it, it's, as I said, it's more about the sort of open-mindedness of law. And for that, you've got to respect. You've got to respect that he was like, well, let's give it all a whirl. You know, you're only on this earth once. Let's try it all. And that he did. He was bisexual. He was a chronic drug taker. So <laughs> took everything out there that was available. He, he would have been up there with the best of, of, best of the guys. You know, if he was alive, 
when Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas was written, I'm sure he would have been a character. He would have been there with Dr. Gonzo and Raul Druk on the strip, dropping all that ether. Why not? Why not? Or adrenochrome. You know, let's go crazy. Let's 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 take some adrenochrome. Let's have some boobs coming out on our back. Watch the film, read the book if you don't know what I'm going on about. Get educated. Get educated. <laughs> anyway, now I've insulted you all. In 1904, he got married to a lady called Rose Kelly, and on their honeymoon in Egypt, he was approached. Now, I say approached. Um, I, I don't know how else to say it. He heard the voice of a uh, an ethereal being called, I think it's, it's pronounced Avas or Ivas, and uh, this uh, ethereal being gave him the instructions to write what was known as the Book of Law. And the main saying or the main rule of the book of law was do what thou wilt do what you want why not you know as i said you only hear once do what thou wilt well you know whatever floats your boat you know if it gets you through the day without killing anybody i'm all for it and so was he so again it's sort of that deep rejection of his christian faith and upbringing from from being a child it's as i said it i'm um, it's all very interesting. I'm, I'm currently reading a book on Alistair Crowley, and I was hoping that Harriet Tubman would have panned out for a bit longer, because I'm about halfway through. And I could go into a lot more detail about it, but I'm already sort of way over what I wanted to be saying on this guy. Very interesting guy. Uh, one of them, I would argue, one of the more interesting people out of this whole whole uh, uh, menagerie of explorers. So if you get the chance to read up on him, even if it's just to go to Wikipedia, do so. It's, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. The one more thing I want to mention is back in World War One, he was living in America and uh, there he was painting and helping the German war effort by politicising uh, and uh, being against the, uh, the the British propaganda. And at the time he was seen as this, again, evil, evil person. You're British. Why, why are you going against the British? Why are you with the Germans? And it turns out he was actually a spy for Britain and he was trying to get into the upper echelons of the German propaganda movement in America to be able to just keep the Brits in, in, in lieu of what was going on at the time. So again, you know, he was, although he ultimately was rejected by his country in the end, and especially by the British press, I think his heart was in the right place for, for the majority of the time. But like anything, if, if, you, if you beat on a guy long enough, it's going to get to the point where he's going to turn around and just go, well, screw you, screw you. So anyway, and the other interesting thing, whilst he was with the British intelligence, he did offer his services in World War II, but by that point, his notoriety was so large that they didn't want to get him involved. He was just too well known for being a, a bit of a bad man, bad boy. And so that he couldn't really be, uh, or they didn't think they could trust him. But he did know, funny enough, Roald Dahl, who wrote Dahl, Dahl, who wrote books like BFG and Fantastic Mr. Fox, and Ian Fleming, who went on to write the James Bond novels so again it's that sort of you know same culture he's a writer they're bound to mix in the same sort of groups and well he did he did and he died on the 1st of December 1947 at the age of 72 from bronchitis and pleurisy and again pleurisy is not something you hear much of these days Bro bronchitis is still quite but very much out there but yeah pleurisy isn't again it's something to do with the lungs he he, he basically died from his lungs being knackered. I would presume by the massive amounts of opium he smoked. <laughs> and uh, amongst other things, amongst other things. Uh, and he was known at the end of his life as the, the wickedest man in the world. Which, as I said, I'm reading one of his biographies at the moment. And I think that's uh, a little bit unfair. But even so, he was different. He was different. And for that, you have to applaud him. So... There we go, Alistair Crowley. What does he have with him? Well, he has a cultist, a perfectly normal person with special interests, who will not try to conspire against you. Dot, dot, dot. Honest. We have a cultist, ditto. And we have a cultist, ditto. The twin of the first cultist, it would appear. And then we also have cocoa leaves, which is, as I'm sure you're aware now, the cultist's favourite food. We have dynamite and we have shovels. Don't know how I feel about the shovels. Everyone knows I'm a big fan of dynamite. We'll just have to see how it goes. Uh, as far as sanity is concerned, the fact that we've got three quarters means we should get a hell of a lot of sanity back with the cocoa leaves. And as long as we can keep that up, we should be okay. So it means we're going to have to just find every shrine and village we can and just stock up on cocoa leaves. Storage-wise, 
I haven't really got a lot, so we'll just have to see how that goes. But even so, I, this I think this is going to be interesting. So I've been jibber jabbering for well a long time. Let's crack on. Welcome back to the Explorers Club, old friend. Have you heard that we are building a statue to honour our most famous member? Word is that you have a good chance of seeing your likeness on that statue. However, I am afraid to tell you that you are not the only candidate. You and your rivals have six expeditions to prove who is the most famous explorer within our club. And we have Alexandra David Neal, Isabella Bird, Richard F. Burton, and... So I've started playing World of Warcraft Legion this week. Murlocs. Marcus Garvey. Now go explore. Adventure awaits. And, well, he's a fan of the occult, so that means we are on certain death. Uh, being New Maruno, we only have the one to go to. The Black, the Dark, the Evil Jungle. Let's crack on. After being too excited to sleep, I stored my equipment on the ship. We had a little time before the ship would be ready, so I sat on the pier and waited. A rich foreigner named Sir Dai Elimajed introduced himself. He told me that he used to live in the area we were heading to before joining an expedition to come to London. He had thereafter settled and invested here and requested that I find his wife in his former village and escort her to London. Well, okay, Pim Daddy, we're going to do this again. I'm just going to say that if she shoots herself, that's not my fault. And she did shoot herself. It wasn't me. It may have been my gun. I may have been the only person who heard her shoot herself. And I may have been the one which discovered, inverted commas, the body. But I didn't kill her. Honest. Honest. Except. I accepted his request to find and return his wife. He nodded thankfully and wished us luck. Just in time, the ship was ready for departure. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Expedition one, and we are generating whimsy. Mm. Oh, whimsy. So, first map. Two regions. Should be pretty simple, he says. We'll see, I guess. I dare not recount the trials and tribulations of the voyage, but thankfully one of the crew called Land Ahoy. I was curious to discover what adventures were awaiting for us here. I should never have come here. All right, Fatty, what's the thin ones have to say? Anything? Anything? What's their names? Let's have a look. Happy Kettle. <laughs> you, sir, are my favourite cultist ever. Happy Kettle. The, oh, we can't see, but he's the, uh, the, the stealer. Uh, kleptomaniac, that's it. Happy Kettle, the kleptomaniac. We have Anthony Harold Sanson, who's an alcoholic. And we have, who are you? Jobby Whittington, or Joby Whittington, I guess that would be. Who's pure? You're a purist. That's great. Uh, I'm sorry, Happy Kettle. You are awesome. You, you, you get to stay with God. So I don't care how bad you get, you are sticking with us. Let's crack on. Thankfully, the affluent foreigner had indicated the location of his former village on our map. I was curious to see if we would find his beloved there. Me too. Right, so it's in the first region. That's fine, that's fine. We can we can we can get there. We can get there. So what do we have first? Oh a trader. Okay. A trading caravan had pitched up camp here. The mysteriously dressed trader had a lot of valuable goods on offer. Most of them seemed to be the remains of other failed expeditions. He hesitated before presenting us with a selection of, of his wares. We could not help but think that he was hiding something from us. They always are. They always are. Alright, so Oh, okay. There's something I didn't notice on the last playthrough. Um, if it's weightless now, or th there is no weight to the item, it has a little feather above it. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's a lot easier to see. Right, so I have actually started this without anything useful, <laughs> like rope or torches. So we could probably do with trading the shovels for some rope. I prefer rope to shovels, I think. I don't know how much they're worth. Six, uh, five. That's that's good. I, I, I can live with that. I could grab a whiskey. I can see it being mega books though. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. We'll keep those just in case for next time. But yeah, we'll take we'll take the rope. The merchant seemed expectant regarding our possible return, as yet another failed expedition to raid his camp. Shouldn't V to raid our camp, or to fill up his camp. Anyway, I digress, I digress. Right, so, I suppose here, the best thing we could do, as we've got a bit of swampland here, is go south and get up on that hill and hopefully be able to see what's going on with the rest of this region. How much is that going to cost me? 45? That's that's livable. We could have rested at the ship, but hardcore, not at all. That's how we play. 
And as it turns out, we have another one. Let's get to the other side of it. Yeah. And we have a stone statue. I inspected the mysterious man-made stone figurine. The ghastly visage seemed to look right at us. It was a disconcerting sight and I desired to move on. We should probably not touch anything. You are, I'll tell you what, you are so miserable. You, all you've done is moan since we got here, Anthony Harold Samson. Cultist. I know, well, he's a drunk, isn't he? So that, that would explain it. Miserable drunk. I noticed a few items by the statue, which must have been put there by people from a nearby village, presumably in an attempt to appease the gods. Well, let me be the judge of that. Mangoes and torches. Awesome. We'll take all those. We took what was useful to us from the offerings. Are they already upset with us? Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, let's eat the mangoes. 59. That's okay. That's okay. We can get to the village. Uh, do you want to go to the other side? 35. Yeah, let's go sit in the swamp. Why not? Okie dokie. This evening we reached a village. We encountered a tribe that appeared to be a group of skilled scouts. As I observed the tribe, I noticed one woman was somewhat out of place. She was the wife I had been tasked to escort back to London. Without further ado, she happily joined our trek and began to show us around the village. Right, who are you? You? The Vidijan. Vividijan? Vividijan? Yes. Ah, she's a kleptomaniac too. Of course, of course. The natives observed us with curiosity. They were polite and offered to help our cause. Do we rest? We could probably do with saving the cocoa leaves for the next expedition, so I can't see them coming up too much, so let's rest. We unpacked our belongings and prepared to spend the night with the natives at their campfire. This night, the villagers held a ritual ceremony. They offered us a bowl of cooked meat that had a delicious stench to it. Suppos supposedly, it would taste like chicken. But Vendijan was taken aback and informed us that it was possible that the meat was human flesh. <gasps> well, it is Al Alistair Crowley. Do what thou wilt, so let's eat it. We accepted their offer and passed the bowl around. This night the villagers held a ritual ceremony. They offered us a bowl of cooked meat that had a delicious smell to it. It looked like a bit of monkey meat. Mm. I got a splendid night's rest. The next morning I woke to find a, to face a crowd of natives. It seems my snoring amused them. We seemed welcomed here. They were mine kind, remained kind and jested to us to find comfort in their settlement. Oh, okay. So they're quite happy for us to stay again. We'll stay again. Then. Why not? We unpacked our belongings and prepared to spend the night with the natives at their campfire. Not long into the evening, one of the natives started arguing with Happy Kettle. The villager insisted that Happy Kettle had stolen something. While the situation calmed down soon after, the mood was spoiled for the rest of the night. Oh, Happy Kettle. Oh, Happy Kettle. The night was quiet and peaceful. The following morning, I worked to face gathered natives. It seems my bedraggled morning appearance intrigued them. It was obvious that we had stressed the hosp hospitality of the villagers more than politeness would dictate. Okay, well, let's uh, see what we've got to trade. Yeah, nothing too exciting. We could have the jewels. Mm, are they worth the two shovels, do you reckon? Yeah, we'll take the jewels. We need some cash. I settled on a trade with the natives, and with that we shall be gone. In a heartbreaking ceremony, Bavidijan had fair, said farewell to her tribe. As we left, she mentioned that she would like to visit a holy shrine in the vicinity to receive a blessing for her travels. She marked the location of the shrine on our map. Ah, well, that, as it turns out, we're heading that way. So that's cool. I think we might head northwards on the way back, just to check out this corner. Just to, you know, have a gander, see what's up there. Uh, we definitely don't want to go that way. Uh, let's go to... There, we need to keep away from this. These are mosquitoes. Uh, so we've got the Joby's Master Flyer. Boom, boom. And up to... Oh. To the shrine. We're heading back. Aren't we? We're heading back. So let's get up onto this hill, 36. Uh, let's upgrade. Who's... Joby. Right, let's get you upgraded just to get a bit more sanity. And then let's... So I presume, because we've got three cultists, this is going to stack. Yeah, it's not too bad, I suppose. We'll just eat two. Get up on the hill. I'm not too fussed about the hyena. Right, it's the springs. We could arguably live without that. So let's go down to this question mark. Whilst beating the hyenas to death. Or... Oh! 
Oh! Oh, bleeding. Oh dear, we might have to take you back. Uh, okay, um, we don't have my usual favourite rolls with the dynamite. And it's... Do you have... Uh... Yeah, and the... We don't have the head. We have the eye, but we don't have the head on that roll. So we're going to take self-damage. If we take any more damage, she's going to die. She can't die. So we're just going to have to beat him. Give him a good, good beating. No. Right, there we go. So, Curse of Poison. So let's hit you with that. Let's see if we can knock off three. If we do a triple attack with the poison... It's not going to kill you, is it? No. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, okay, we'll go again. Oh, these are rubbish. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. Right, he's dead. I've got nowhere to heal. This isn't good. This isn't good. Um, well, we'll roll again anyway. Oh dear, I didn't mean to press it like that. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be dead here. Yeah. Not good. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, attack. Roll. 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 Oh god. We're down to one. Is that it? We're down to one. Do you actually have any... You do have blank dice. Well, it's good to know. It's good to know. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's roll again, I guess. You see, my thing is, if I use this now, it's a group damage of two. Maybe I should have used it at the start. And we all die. We all die in one, one big, messy... Ah, oh, jeez. Well, well... I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to hope to God that he misses. Right. Roll. Hit. Miss. Roll. Roll. Hit. Miss. Boo. <laughs> Okay, I, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the information I had on Alistair Crowley. Ah, <laughs> oh, worst go ever. Worst go ever. Every explorer starts with their own custom equipment list. That I know. That I know. Um, I think we'll be replaying Alistair Crowley straight away because he definitely didn't get a good, a good sesh. So, um, yeah bit of a write off this one but never mind i guess we'll, we'll jump straight into uh to the next expedition on the next episode so sh yeah shit shit thank you for watching <laughs> as always a like is always appreciated and i uh, will be see you with mr crowley on the next one take it easy